In this video, I'm going to go over a couple exceptions for companies who might not fit this widget model that this template really is built for um, and give a couple ways around those so that you can still have financial statements that make sense. Uh, the first exception is going to be, like we said, um, this is built for a widget model and maybe you're going to be a subscription-based revenue model or you're going to have a service or maybe advertising platform or something like that, which is you know pretty common. We're, we're looking at tech companies here. So um, if you don't fit the buy material, build a product, sell a product, you can basically just plug in a revenue number with a sales volume of one, which is exactly what I've done here. Um, the caveat is that this number still needs to make sense. So you still need to have backup and, and be able to say why this number is reasonable. Um, you can make a new tab to, um, to break this number down. Um, some judges might appreciate it. Some judges might see it as just more material they need to look at. And they look at a lot of material. Um, so if you do make a new tab, make it as simple as possible just to show that there's there's solid data behind those numbers and that you've put some thought into them. Um, but you can do, again, exactly what I did here, which is just whatever your revenue number is going to be with an expected sales volume of one. Now, if you do this, also make sure that you don't have, um, you know, unit stuff down here because um, it's it you, you're not really using units anyway, so it's not going to work. Another possible situation is that you're um, setting up contracts with your customers that are going to be paid over an extended period of time. So maybe in a construction type situation, you create an estimate or you create a job that's going to be billed out over the following months. Um, depending on how you've worked out your numbers on the back end, if that's the situation, you would use the percentage of sales, um, this guy right here, what do you expect to collect? So um, if you want to show the sales, in one year, but you're not going to have that money. So we're getting back to, you know, the cash that's going to show up here on your balance sheet. Um, you can reduce this percentage. So say I sell, you know, this much money worth of contracts, but I only get to bill out and collect half of it. I would say 50% here, and that's going to reduce the cash I have on hand um, in year one. So that's when you would get into actually dealing with these numbers. Again, they're probably too complicated for most companies, but if you want to accurately reflect your numbers and you've got a situation like that, that's where you would use um, percentages here of, of what you've collected. Same with paying out. So if you've got contracts with vendors that you've got, you know, a whole lot of, it's gonna be 100, of expenses that you need to pay out and you know at the end of the year you're gonna have a liability maybe you only pay 50% of the invoices to your vendors and 50% is left for the following year that would show up under your accounts payable so these percentage numbers are where you would mess with stuff like that again it's probably not gonna be applicable to most of you but that's where you would do that another situation could be if you are um, licensing your product or you're you're doing something where you're collecting money almost as a third party so um, for example say you make an app where you sell airline tickets and you collect the money from the customer but you immediately pay it right back out to the airline because the customer is just booking through you um, basically what you could do there that would just be a cost um, so you're you're talking about the the cost of one unit um, it gets tricky because you might have other revenue streams. Um, but if, you know, basically in that situation, again, it's going to depend heavily on what your situation, your specific situation is. But you could say, you know, the expected sales volume would be the number of tickets you plan to sell through your, your platform. The sales price would be, you know, the average. Again, that's going to be hard to average out, but it could be the average. And then the, um, you could do, you know, even materials. So the materials to produce one ticket would be the actual airline ticket that you're selling. And you can put that number here. Um, because those prices are probably gonna, because those prices probably anyway are gonna vary pretty largely, you're gonna have to just manipulate those numbers until they are close to what you've already projected. Um, Again, the reason that they have this template is so that it's easy for the judges to look at because it's all the same thing. Um, but you really should have financials on your own end, depending on what stage you're at, um, to already know within reason what those numbers are going to be. So you can just, again, kind of manipulate these until they look close to what you were already planning on.
The last weird situation might be if you're planning to build technology that you're just going to immediately sell. Um, in this case, you would not have revenue at all. Um, so you could just leave this revenue entirely blank. So say you're developing a piece of technology that you plan to just completely sell off to another company. You're gonna you're gonna give up the rights to it, sell the the IP, and just be done with it. Um, your business plan essentially is just going to be how you're going to fund it. So it's going to be either money that you've contributed or, you know, loans and investments and the expenses that it takes to get it developed before selling it. So in that case, the revenue is going to be zero and that's fine because in the rest of your business plan, you're going to explain why. So as long as your executive summary reflects that you don't have revenue streams because you're just creating and selling the actual product or the intellectual property to the product, um, as long as the rest of your business plan reflects that, it's completely fine to just not show any revenue on your financial projections.